All right, so this morning we are getting our closest look at the remains of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge and the container ship that toppled it. Tom Costello has the latest out on the water with the Army Corps of Engineers and the first up close look at the massive Dolly container ship and the wreckage of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge laying on top of it. The Dolly's bow crushed under a massive piece of steel. That weighs somewhere between three and 4,000 tons. We have one of the largest cranes coming in here tonight on the eastern seaboard that picks up 1,000 tons at a time. The water so muddy and dark, divers and drones have struggled to get a clear view. Submerged under the wreckage, the remains of four bridge repair workers still missing. This dash cam video shows them on the bridge a few hours before the disaster. The wife of Julio Cervantes, who survived, tells NBC News the workers were on a break in their cars when the bridge suddenly collapsed. Amazingly, Cervantes survived even though he doesn't swim. The Army Corps of Engineers will have a lead role now in clearing and reopening America's ninth busiest port. Here's the challenge. They need to clear a 700-foot stretch right here to allow ships to get in and out. But it's not just above water, of course, it's below water. And all of that twisted bridge, that metal underwater, it is razor sharp, posing a potentially lethal threat to ships and the divers working underwater. This work is very unforgiving, and the planning has to be done in extreme detail. And that's the work that's going on today. Potentially very dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. Again today, a team of NTSB investigators on the ship, interviewing the ship's pilots, captain, and crew members. The ship's black box shows alarms going off at 1.24 a.m., indicating a loss of power. The ship's pilot made an urgent call for tugboats and to drop anchor. It's raining. It's slippery. Of course, we have the hazardous materials. Uh, we have containers that are open. Uh, we certainly have um, structural damage everywhere. With massive cranes and barges arriving as soon as tonight, experts believe it could take a month to clear the wreckage. When the green button is pushed and go is given by the incident command for those cranes to start picking it out of the water, it will go faster than most people can expect. But the size and scale of the job unprecedented. We certainly understand the demand to get this port functioning and open again. We're going to do that, but we're going to do it safely.